Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks again for joining us um, on our continued saga of the extension of the Summer Food Service Program nationwide waiver um, updates. Um, the presentation today is going to mirror some of the information that we shared yesterday. However, um, some of it has been expanded to cover a lot of the questions that we got yesterday and then also some um, further guidance that we received from USDA. At the end, we will open it up for questions, of course. So the Summer Food Service Program waiver extensions, um, the extensions, the public release was um, put out on Monday, August 31st, um, that the uh, waivers are now extended until December 31st of 2020. Um, four of the, the major extensions that I'll cover today, um, allowing non-area eligible school districts to participate in the summer food program during the fall of school year 2020, allowing parents and guardians or guardians to pick up meals to take home to children, allowing schools to request a waiver to leave out a meal component of the summer food service meal pattern in order to serve reimbursable meals to children, and then allowing schools to serve non-congregate meals under the Summer Food Service Program. And again, all of these waivers are extended until December 31st of 2020 or until funding runs out. So what does this mean for our schools? Uh, schools may operate and serve meals under the Summer Food Service Program. A uh, change from yesterday is that effective August 31st, all meals um, can be served under um, the Summer Food Service Program using the, the Summer Food Service meal pattern. Um, all meals served starting on August 31st may be claimed under the Summer Program. Of course, under the Summer Program, all of the meals served are free of charge to all of the children receiving a meal, um, again, starting August 31st. You can operate your program in two different ways. You can be a restricted open program, which will allow you to serve only those that are enrolled in your school. You can operate as an open program, as a lot of schools did back in March when schools were closed, where you would serve enrolled students and non-enrolled students ages 1 to 18, and then disabled children up to 22 years of age. Schools may continue to serve meals in a congregate setting, in a non-congregate setting, or serve multiple meals for multiple days at one time, but only up to five days at a time. Schools may allow parents or guardians to pick up non-congregate meals for their children who are distance learning. Schools are not required to provide meals for children who are distance learning. If your school decides to offer meals, to children who are distance learning, then you must offer meals to all of those children distance learning. An example would be if you have an elementary school and a high school, and you cannot just offer meals to those students at the elementary school who are distance learning, you must offer those meals to all the students, the elementary and the high school, or all of the schools within your district. Schools are not required to provide home delivered meals. The previous waiver guidance allowed weekend meals and meals on school holidays. USDA at this time is unsure if this will be allowed during the current waivers. Um, so more information to come on the meals outside of scheduled school days. Schools have the option to opt into participating either in either summer food or NSLP. This decision will be made at the district level, meaning that all schools under that district must opt into participating in either summer food or NSLP. Um, and this slide is also a little different um, than yesterday. So NSLP meals already serve to children. What do we do with those? The waiver extension was announced on August 31st and was effective immediately. So meals that were served prior to August 31st will be claimed under NSLP unless we receive further guidance from USDA allowing schools to retroactively claim those meals under summer food. So at this time, we're just gonna simply hold tight 
and, and wait and see for further guidance from USDA. You can continue to accept free and reduced price applications. Actually, we encourage that you do and direct certifications through December of 2020. As this information is used for Title I funding allocations and will be needed once schools are required to return to providing meals under the NSLP program. The waiver extensions again are dependent upon federal funding availability and could be retracted prior to December 31st of 2020. So we want to make sure that all schools are ready for that whenever that does happen. <clears throat> so just a little bit of change from yesterday again. Um, we did participate in a call with USDA, our regional office staff and um, headquarters staff, where they did clarify some of the information for us, but not all of it. Um, some of the questions that were still lingering from, from our state, as well as other states in our region, um, include, <clears throat> can our CCIs participate in summer food? Can schools who participate in summer food still participate in the after school snack program? Are the waivers retroactive to the first day of school in August? Can schools serve weekend meals and meals on holidays as they did last spring under the waivers? So those are still some of the questions that we <clears throat> are patiently awaiting answers for. Of course, we're waiting for further guidance and then all the information that we are providing today is solely based on what we've received so far from USDA. And then of course, we'll notify you as any changes um, present themselves. So participating and signing up for summer food. Um, I've developed a Microsoft form survey that I'll be emailing out to all of the schools tomorrow. This includes schools that previously participated in summer and also schools that um, did not participate in summer back in the spring. I'm basically going to ask you, do you want to participate in the summer food service program or in NSLP? And if you are not starting your program on August 31st, when will you be starting your summer food service program? Simple, there's like three questions, simple and to the point. We ask that you guys fill that out as soon as you can and get that information into us. Then based on that information, we will um, update all of the previous um, sponsors who participated um, in the summer food service program in the spring. We'll update your information to have your programs end September 30th. And then any new schools that want to participate in the summer program, I will email you with startup information. And if you're unsure as a new district, if you want to participate, please send me an email or give me a call and we can talk about it. Um, the new summer food program will start on October 1st of 2020. So we will be issuing out renewals for program information. And of course, um, we're not exactly sure how that's gonna work yet. So please watch for more details and instructions to come. Okay, so what do we do with our claims for reimbursement? So meals that were served prior to August 31st will uh, be claimed under the NSLP, again, unless we receive further guidance from USDA that we can uh, retroactively claim those meals under summer. Again, we're gonna hold tight for now and we will um, let you guys know what we find out from USDA. <clears throat> right now, each uh, sponsor that participated in summer last spring has a COVID site in Andy Foods. And so for the month of September, your meals will be claimed under one site. <clears throat> if you have multiple sites that you're serving meals at, which most of our schools do, you'll combine those meals and claim under one site. <clears throat> Meal data will be needed, um, will need to be collected by site for all the meals served after October 1. So we're going to work on a plan on how to collect that information and more than likely it will be um, as part of the renewal. July summer food claims um, were generated in ND Foods. So if you did not operate the summer food service program in July of 2020, we ask that you please go into the ND Food system and decline the July claim when we updated um, and extended the program date for a lot of our sponsors to September 30th, it automatically generated a July claim. So we'll have you guys go ahead and decline those if you didn't participate in the summer program in July. 
OK, so meal count tally sheets and POS systems. We had lots of questions about this yesterday, so hopefully we can clarify some of that information. Um, do you need to track the number of students taking a meal? Yes, you do. You have two different ways that you can do that. Actually, three different ways. <clears throat> you can use the meal counting tally forms. Um, it's a template that we gave out in the spring for schools to keep track of all the, the meals that they were serving. Want to make sure that you count all the meals that you distribute to children on those forms. Breakfast, lunch, and snack meals must be counted and documented separately. Uh, reimbursement is only paid for meals distributed to children. No reimbursement for adult meals. You may serve adult meals, however, um, those meals are not reimbursable. You may offer those meals um, for free of charge. Um, oh, free and then charge the general fund or charge staff for meals served. You may use your POS systems to track meals served also. Um, meal prices would need to be changed to zero so families are not charged for meals under the summer food program. And we don't want you to change any of the statuses of the kids. Um, don't make them all free. Um, don't modify their free, reduced or paid status in your POS system. Um, and then the meal counting forum template is available at that web at, at the website listed. It's also available on our website. Um, another way that you can track your meals um, is you can use a spreadsheet. As long as it contains um, each day separate, each meal separate, and then the number of, of kids that you serve that day. Meal documentation and production records. Do I need to maintain a production record tracking the food that is served? Yes, you do. You'll need to maintain a production record just like you would during NSLP or the school breakfast program. You can use the production record template that we provided for the summer food program, or you can use the production record that you're currently using for your NSLP or uh, school breakfast program. Please make sure that all the components are listed on the production record and the serving size that was provided. Um, during a review of all the desk audits that we did this summer, there was um, a lot of schools that didn't fill the production records out correctly, missing components, not including serving sizes. So we ask that you um, please do that. If you have any questions about that, please give me a call, send me an email, and we'll work through it. <clears throat> the summer food production record template is also available on our website. One thing we didn't really talk about yesterday is the reimbursement rates for the summer program. Um, as you can see, the rates are quite a bit higher than NSLP, so please keep that in mind <coughs> when you're making that decision to, to switch to summer versus NSLP. Um, you are only allowed two meals per day, even though we're listing the breakfast, lunch, and snack. You could do a combination of breakfast and lunch. You could do a breakfast and a snack. You could do a lunch and a snack, but two meals per day is the max. Um, all of your revenues and expenses should be run through your district school food service fund and should be coded separately by federal program. We went through this yesterday on what foods that you can serve in the summer food program. Um, for breakfast, you have to serve a cup of milk, half a cup of fruit, vegetable, or 100% fruit juice, and one serving of grain. For lunch, um, you must include all of the four components, um, and there are five items total, one cup of milk, two fruit or vegetables, they have to be different items, um, to equal a three-fourths cup, one serving grain, and a two-ounce meat-meat alternate. For snack, you can choose up to two components to serve, one cup of milk, one fruit vegetable equaling three fourths of a cup, one serving of grain and one serving of meat meat alternate. Again, only two meal types per day may be claimed under the summer program. And great news that you can use your USDA foods that you've been ordering for your NSLP program for the summer program. We had a lot of questions about offer versus serve in the summer program. Um, last March, when we um, jumped to the summer program, I would say 
almost 100% of our sponsors were serving non-congregate meals, which really didn't allow them to utilize Offer versus Serve. However, now, um, you know, I'm sure a lot of our schools are doing either congregate meals or a, a, um, a little of both non-congregate and congregate. So since you're serving congregate meals, the Offer versus Serve option is available. Um, this slide tells you a little bit of a difference between um, serving the meals when you do a, a serve versus an offer versus serve. So um, for breakfast in offer versus serve, um, you must make the kids um, have three items. They must take three of the items listed. And actually for breakfast, you can choose to offer an, an, a meat meat alternate, but you can also offer an extra fruit, veggie, juice, or uh, grain serving, and that would be included in one of the items. Um, for lunch, you're still offering the same four components, the same five items. However, during offer versus serve, they have to take three of the components. So three of the components could be um, milk, um, the fruit and veggie equaling three-fourths cup, and a, and a grain. So technically that's four units or four items, but three components. Um, if you have any questions about offer versus serve, please reach out to me and we can talk about it. Second meals um, are allowed under the summer food service program and a percentage of them are claimable. So we had some questions about that yesterday. So second meals are allowed for congregate meals only. You can't allow second meals for non-congregate meals. In order to receive reimbursement for a second meal in the summer food program, the meal must contain all of the components that are required. <clears throat> and only 2% of your second, 2% of your total first meal served could be claimed as second meals. Um, it's a little confusing, um, but second helpings are not the same as second meals and um, but could be charged as an a la carte if you choose to do that. Um, second or second meals um, may be served only after all the children receive a first meal. So what's next in our plan? Um, our office will be sending out a Microsoft form for all of our sponsors to complete, which will help us gather the participation data for the month of September. Again, just simply asking, Will you be participating in the um, summer food service program or will you be continuing on with NSLP? After that, I'll use that information to reach out to all of our um, new sponsors that want to participate with some sign up information for them and documents for them to fill out. Um, once we receive final guidance from USDA, we will publish a summer food service training out on our website. Um, that new sponsors will need to complete. And um, if previous sponsors want to review it just as a program refresher, that's great too. But again, we aren't going to publish an official training until once we receive final guidance from USDA. Um, our office plans to stay in continuous contact with all of you, whether that's going to be via email or we have more Teams meetings where we just do some Q&As or just push out more information once USDA decides to, um, to give us more guidance. Just want to make sure that we're always in communication with you guys. Um, we all um, you know, are here to help if you have questions. So that's kind of the information we have for today. I guess we can open it up for questions. <clears throat> 